Hi there, and welcome to part two of the DIY programmable eight loop pedal board switcher. So where am I up to with this project so far? Well, I haven't made a terrible lot of ground on the hardware side. I've made some ground on the software side as far as the programming is concerned. I've solved a couple of problems there. I can now switch between channels and uh, actually create a series of banking situations where you have banks and then um, basically patches that will turn on uh, different loops to suit yourself. Uh, I will show you where I'm up to with that. I will leave a copy of the sketch or the program uh, down in the description so you can copy and paste that to wherever you like. So where am I up to hardware wise? Well, I've kind of got the lid roughly marked out. I need to make sure that everything's going to fit. I don't know whether you can see those lines or not. Oh, that's a better angle. So you can see the line across the top here is the line for the LEDs and I've actually marked the spacing out for those. Then we have the top row of switches, which there will be three switches. I'm just not sure how far the last two will be, so I haven't marked those yet, but the center ones will, will go here and here. So we've got three, two, and then three at the bottom. So I've just got to make sure everything's going to fit internally before I go, you know, drilling holes and making a mess out of that. Also, I have two relay boards now and I've found that they, they are going to be an extremely tight fit. I've had to check some out of one of the boards to actually get it to fit inside the enclosure because the enclosure has these, these like sort of raised internal uh, sections or ribbed sections that are there basically to screw the thing down like the, it goes all the way through. So I thought maybe I could I could like um, die grind these out or dremel these out or I could just take a little bit out of the board and actually get it to fit like that. But it's going to be extremely tight because I've basically got to get the two boards in there and then have my jacks across the top and they'll be too deep. So there'll be a jack on the top and the bottom and there'll be 16 of those right across there. So that is a little problem I need to solve in itself, but I'm very close. The tolerance is fine as, but I think I can get it to fit. Uh, also, I've got more of these guys so I can finish that part of it off. And something, I don't know whether I mentioned it in the last video, but I intend to uh, actually put these together in that sort of fashion and actually solder each one of these legs together so that these are coupled together because they actually switch. Um, they're closed circuit to the pin. So Basically, when I have nothing plugged in here, uh, this will act as if it was just a, a piece of cable in here. And, you know, instead of being totally open circuit. So that if you don't have anything plugged in here and you actually hit the button that turns this particular pair on, it will basically just return it. You won't end up with that um, 50 or 60 cycle hum that you'll get if it was open circuit. So that's that's a little thing. And I've done that similar things to that before with other pieces of equipment and I thought it'd be a nice uh, thing to put into this one. So at this stage, I've still got to get the foot switches. I've got shit loads of LEDs here, so that's not a problem. Uh, but yeah, I've still got to get the eight momentary foot switches. I still have to get a little bit more mounting hardware uh, to mount the PCBs. I've got the the uh, mounting hardware for the uh, Arduino Mega board. Like I'm just going to use these little guys. 
that I've pulled out of something else. But I've still got to get some for the relay boards. So where am I up to with the programming side of it? Well, basically I've got it sorted. So now I can switch between two banks, which is indicated by these two LEDs here. So you've got like bank one and bank two. And these six represent the relays that you'll be switching or like each loop that your effects pedal will be on. All I've got to do is connect them to relays. These bank LEDs don't need to be connected to anything else, just an LED so you can visually see it. And I've already got this thing powered. Uh, later on, I will actually add in the void loop, which is like the one-time run program when you first power the thing up to actually automatically turn one of these on. I haven't done that at this stage. So when I press the, the bank button, or the button that I've nominated as the bank button, it will actually just turn the first one on and then we can proceed from there. This button here is our bank button. These three are our different uh, programmable loop buttons or our uh, patch buttons, if you want to call them that. So I'll press the bank button and you'll notice we get an LED on here. I'll press the bank button again and I don't know whether you can see it, but I've got to sort that out. For some reason, that guy's really dull. Uh, don't know why. It seems to be the same resistor value as the others. So anyway, I'll sort that out later on. So we'll go back to the brighter one. And if I am to press, say, the first button, you get a certain sequence of those six LEDs and I'll actually be able to, to make easily make this like an eight loop program. It's very easy. I've only got to add uh, another two lines um, basically per patch to make this happen. If I press the second button, we get another sequence. If we press the third button, we get all of them on, which is just another sequence. I can program them to do whatever I like. Now, if we press the bank button, we go over to the other one and you can just see that that's on, I hope. And it hasn't changed yet because I haven't pressed the patch button. Press the patch button, we get yet another sequence. We press the middle patch button, we get yet another sequence. And we press the third patch button and we get another sequence again. We'll go back to the first one. I'll press the third patch button and you'll see that they'll all be on. Go back to the other bank. I'll press that first patch button again and it goes backwards and forwards. So basically, you know, this is pretty much all you really need. I can easily add additional bank LEDs and bank programming to this. Uh, you know, the sky's the limit. I mean, you could have four, five, six, I don't know, whatever you like as far as your banks are concerned. Uh, you could have more than eight LEDs. Uh, you know, there's still plenty of spare pins on, on this Mega, so I could just literally keep going if I wanted to. It really comes down to the limits of your box, the limits of, you know, how many different uh, patches you actually want to run, like how many different configurations between the, the eight LEDs that, that I'll, or the eight loops that I'll end up with. So I'll leave a copy of that uh, sketch or that program down in the description so you can copy and paste but you know um, this was a real goal that I wanted to achieve to be able to do this this bank switching and I've pretty much got it worked out so uh, you know the programming's essentially done I've only got to tweak it a little bit tidy it up uh, the problems have been solved as far as I'm concerned now I've just got to get to and do the hardware side of it, get the thing built, and then run that program in. And hopefully down the track, I may actually 
create several different programs that I can run. I'll sit there and write up new uh, sketches for it so I can do multitudes of different things, maybe run like instead of just one patch button, maybe two so you can go up and down or, uh, you know, just different configurations. Maybe, you know, somebody might need some help. They might like me to write a sketch for them. I can probably do that. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting and informative. Let me know in the comments section any ideas that you have. Uh, have a look at the sketch and if you're kind of uh, down with this, this C uh, coding business or C plus coding or, you know, Arduino coding and you see something that I could fix up, let me know in the comments section. It'd be good. Have a great day. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, don't hesitate to share it because if you liked it, somebody else might. And uh, subscribe if you want to see more. This is a multi-part series. We're only at part two. Uh, I think there'll probably be four or five parts to this video, uh, to this to this uh, series, before I'm finished. Have a great day. I'll catch you later.